Hello everyone, today I will talk about the list controls in ASP.NET. And there are 5 types of list controls that you can use in ASP.NET, which are checkbox list, drop down list, list box, and radio button list. And one common thing about these list controls is they inherit from the same base class. So for example, if I check the definition of drop down list class, I will see that it inherits from list control base class. And if I check, let's say, list box, it also inherits from the list control and the same for all five list controls of ASP.NET. And if I check the definition of this list control base class, I will see some properties like selected item or value and I will also see some methods like clear selection and all of these properties and methods are common to the five list controls. So that means I can access the selected list item by using selected item property for any list control like radio button list or drop down list or list box or whatever this control it is. Let's add a drop down list to our web form. And when I place it, you may see that this pop up window appeared. And I can access this pop up window later by clicking this small arrow appearing on the top right of the drop down list. And I will click at the items link, which will show me this window where I can create new list items. So I will add three items and I will name the first item as videos and I will change its value to one and the text of the second list item will be electronics and its value will be two and for the third item the text will be books and let's set its value to three. So you may think of this value as the unique identifier of these list items. And if you want, you can change the order of these items by using up and down arrows here. So after I add the three items, I will click OK. And if I choose split view, you will see that for each list item, a new ASP tag is added inside the drop down list ASP tag. So let me change the ID of this drop down list. I will name it the RP categories. And you may also notice that the values we provided in the window where we create these list items are added as value attributes in these list item HTML tags. And we have one, two, three. So if I view this page in my browser and I will see my drop down list with these three categories. And by using this approach, you actually add static list items and which is not preferred most of the time. Imagine that this drop down list will be used to allow users to filter some products by categories. And maybe your site will extend its product catalog and it will begin to sell games. And it's not a good idea to use HTML markup to add the new category item. Instead, it's a lot better idea to have a categories table and pull these categories information from that database table and display them, let's say, in our drop down list here. And whenever there's a change in the database, like there's a new category or one of the existing categories is updated or deleted, then this change will be automatically reflected to your list control. You wouldn't need to worry about the changes in your design view. So let's get rid of this drop down list. Let's add a list box. And I will name this as list categories because I will display categories in this list box as well. So I will switch to code behind file and I will show you several syntax for adding some dynamic list items to a list control. In the first syntax, I create a list item with some initial tags and value. And after I created this list item named item1, I add this item to the items collection of our list categories and I use add method to do that. Let me show you this second syntax that you can use. 
which looks like this. And here again I created a new list item. This time I didn't provide text or value fields. Initially I declare our list item as an empty list item and in the next two lines I provided its text values and also value for the value property which is 2. And next I added this item2 list item to the items collection by using the add method. And the third syntax that you can use is actually combination of these two lines that I showed in the first approach into a single line. So instead of declaring the new list item in a new line, I declare that new list item as a parameter to the add method of the items collection. So this way I create a new list item with electronics tags and with three value and I add this new list item to the items collection of our list control. And the last syntax that I want to show is this. In this approach, I don't provide any value fields. I only provide the text information as a string to the add method again of the items collection. And in this case, add creates a new list item by using this home string value and add this list item to the items collection of our list control. So all these three approaches will work the same way except that you cannot provide any value field in the last syntax. However, the other three approaches will work almost the same way and you can choose any syntax that you feel more comfortable with. And I generally prefer this third syntax. So let's display our page in the browser. And here are list box with the four items that are added with four different syntax. And if I want to display the HTML source for our list box, I will choose inspect. Here I have the first list item which is books and its value is 1. For the second the value is 2. For the third the value is 3. And for the last one the value is assigned as the home because we didn't provide the value field explicitly when creating this fourth item. And by default behavior its value is set to its text value. So if you don't want to happen this, you need to provide a value field initially. Another thing that I want to show is binding some collections to list controls. Many times you may have a, some collection of items and you may want to use that collection item to be displayed in your list control. For example, let's create a string collection of categories which has three categories which are string values, books, movies and games and I can use a loop to iterate through the categories collection and create a list item for each category item in that collection. So let's use a for each loop to iterate through the categories starting from the zero index and add each category item to our list box. This will perfectly work, but actually you don't need to use a loop to achieve this goal. Instead, you can use data source property of list controls. And as a data source, we will use categories because we want to bind categories to our list box. When you want to use data source property, you have to use its the data bind method. It's basically not enough to indicate the data source. You have to call data bind method to bind the indicated data source to the list box. So this approach will basically create a list item for each item in our collection. So if I display my page in the browser, this is going to be what I get, three items in my list control. There is another very strong type that you can use to create collection which is called list. When declaring a list, you need to provide its type. So I will create a string list. So that's why I need to provide string type name inside these brackets. And I need to give a name to my list since it's also a variable. And I will create my list with initially no values. And then I can add new values to my string collection and I need to 
use its add method and I need to pass a string as the item to be inserted that list. So I will add videos and I can go ahead and I can add another item. Let's say I will add musics and I don't need to change anything in these two lines where I bind categories to my list box because I can also indicate list collections as my data source for list controls. And one more thing, I could initiate my string list collection with some values instead of adding them later. So to do that at the end of the declaration, I need to indicate the items within curly braces. So first item is videos and the second item is going to be musics. So this is gonna work the same way. If you want, you can view it in, your, in the browser. I, but I want to move to the next step to show how can you bind class objects to list controls. So to do that, we need to add a new class. So before I create a new class, I will get rid of this existing code. And I will right click in my project name and add and I will choose class. As the class name, I will type category. And our category class will have two fields, which is category ID, integer type, and the other one is category name, string type. Don't worry about details too much like what is get or set. I will talk about this more in a future video. So after I created my class, I can create new instances from that class. So first I will create the collection that will hold the instances of category class. So I need to define my list as a type of category class. This is because this is going to be a list collection of category instances. That is why its type has to be category class. And the list will be initially empty. Now I will declare some instance of category class and then I will add those instances to our list collection. So here are two category instances. First one is category one, cat one, and its category ID property is set to one and its category name is set to books. And after I declare this category instance, I add it to our categories collection by using the add method as always. And the same for the category two, its category ID is 2 and its category name is movies. And after I'm done with my collection, I can use data source property of our list control to bind the categories. And I need to call, of course, its data bind property to finish the data binding. So let's view our page in the browser to see how our list control will look like. And here what we see is actually the type of the items in our list control, which is category type, right? Each item we bind to our list control are actually a category type. So why this is happening is because when you bind a complex object to a list control, the list control cannot figure out which property of that complex it should display. So what I mean is each category instance has actually two specific information, which are category ID, which is integer, and also category name, which is string. And this control cannot determine itself which property value it should display. So we need to tell our list control what information about these complex objects we want to display in our list control. So we will want to actually, of course, display the category names. So to do that, I need to use data text field property of the list control and I need to assign a string value for that property and what goes inside is the name of the property that I want to display. So the name of the property values that I want to display is actually category name. So accidentally if I type a slightly different value here I will receive an error because the compiler will check a property with the given text and if it cannot find a property associated with the complex objects which is category instances in our scenario then it will throw an exception so make sure that you provide valid property names as a data text field 
And remember that we also provided some values for the category ID properties. And we consider this category ID property as the unique identifier of the categories. So for example, when you want to do certain operations on a specific category, you will definitely need this category ID to locate that category in the database. And we can include this category ID unique identifiers in our list box. So to do that, we use data value field and which is going to be category ID, which is the name of the property. We want its value attached to the list controls. So let's display our page in the browser. And yes, this time it works. It displays the category names. And if I check this HTML source for our list box, you will see that the values for each item are also attached to the value attribute of the list items. First one is one, second one is two. The reason why I can get the IDs of each category as the value fields is because of these lines. So whenever you bind some class instances to a list control, you have to provide proper values for the data text field and data value field. Otherwise, what you will see in the list box is going to be the type of that complex object, which was categories in our scenario. So always remember providing the proper values for these two properties, data text field and data value field. So next, what I want to do is I want to print out the selected item in our list box. So to do that first, I will add a button next to the list box and I will change its ID to btn submit and I will change its text to submit. And in the next line, I will place a label and I will delete its initial text, which is label now. And I will change its ID to LBL selected. So whenever I click the submit button, I want my label display the selected category in my list box. So let's double click on the submit button to create a click event handler. Before we start writing code with this click event handler, I want to move this code which binds some items to do this control into a new method. So I will create a void method which is going to be bind categories and I will paste that code here. Next, I want to call this method inside the page lot. And here we need to have this if condition to check if the page is postback or not. And if you want to learn more about this, you need to watch my video tutorial about postback and view state. Basically, whenever you bind some data in the page load event, you have to have this condition and you can get a detailed answer in that video. So let's move forward and write the necessary code in our submit click event handler. So first I get the text of the selected category through the selected item property of the list category. And the same way I get the value of the selected item, I assign these two values into a two different string type variables. And here, instead of using selected item dot value, you could directly use selected value. And it is the same thing. It wouldn't matter which property you use. And I prefer selected value since it's shorter. So after I get these values, I want to display them in the label. So to do that, I need to use text property of the label. And what I want to display is first selected text. And I want to place the value inside a parenthesis. To do that, I add the parenthesis here and I place the selected value between these two parentheses. So let's view our page in the browser and to see if it is going to work or not. So I will select one category and I will click submit. And yes, it correctly displayed the category name and the its associated value, which is actually the book ID, the unique identifier. And I will choose movies and I will click submit. And yes, it also displayed the 
movies correctly, which means our code is working just perfect. So one thing that I want to emphasize is selected item or selected value properties are the most frequently used properties of the list controls. So whenever you want to read the value, then you can use selected value property. But if you want to get the text information of the selected item, then you have to use selected item property and then choose text property. You can also enable multiple selection in list controls. So to do that, I will select my list box and here I will add a property which is selection mode and I will make it multiple. So with this configuration, I can select multiple items in my list box, but I need to update my click event handler because our click event handler works only if a single item is selected from our list box but now multiple items can be selected. So I will clear existing code because it will change substantially. So I will first create an empty string which is going to be selected text and I will use for each loop to iterate through the list items in our list categories. And I will need this if condition because I will consider displaying the category text only if that list item is selected. So if I don't have this filter, no matter what selection is made in the list box, it will display every item. Because I iterate through the items collection of our list categories, which contains all the list items that list categories display. So I need this if condition to filter items if they are selected or not. And next, similar to what we have done before, I created two string variables to get the text and value information from the item selected. And I append this information in this format to our selected text variable. So pay attention that here I use plus equal assignment, which means don't overwrite the existing value stored in selected text variable, instead append the new string variables to the existing value. So as a summary, what we have done here is we iterate through the every list item in the categories and by using this if condition, we get the information from only the selected list items and we append this information in this format to the our selected text variable. And what I need to do at the end of this for each loop is to display this information in our label. So I assign the selected text variable to the text property of our label. So let's view our page in the browser. And here is our list box. If I press Ctrl and click the other item, I can also select it because selection mode is set to multiple. And now I will press submit and actually our application didn't work properly. The reason for this is these two lines. Here actually I need to change these two to item variable because when the for each it trace through the list controls, it assigns each list item to the item variable and in the, inside this loop I need to use this item list item variable to access the text and value of the selected items. And after this change, let's view our page one more time. And I will choose two items again and then I will click submit. And now it works correctly. It's displays two selected items in the label. What I want to do next is I want to add a delete button. So under the label, I will place a button and I want this button to delete the selected item. So I will name it btn delete and I will change its text to delete. Then I will double click on delete button to create its event handler. If we assume that only single item can be selected from the list box, Actually, the implementation of this delete functionality will be pretty simple. 
So that's the all code we need if single item could be selected from our list box. However, our list box allows users to do more than one selections, which will require more lines of code. We will need to use for each loop to iterate through the list items. And if the list item is selected, we will use the same method. We will use remove method of the items collection to remove the selected item. So let's test this code to see if it is going to remove the selected item or not. So I will select one item and I will click delete and which of course will not work because in C sharp, if there is a loop executed on a certain list, you cannot do change on that list while the loop is still happening. So what I mean is while I'm iterating through the items collection, I cannot delete or add any item to that collection. As you see inside the loop, we are trying to remove an item from that collection, which is going to break this loop and C sharp won't let you do that. To resolve that issue, I will create a list that is going to be a collection of list items. And this list collection will store the list items that is to be deleted from our list categories. So I will name it items to be deleted. So here inside this loop, instead of deleting these selected items, I will add these selected items to my items to be deleted list item collection. So I will use its add method and I will provide the item. And at the end of this for each loop, items to be deleted collection should have the, all the items that the user wants to delete. And next, what I need to do is to iterate through the items to be deleted collection and remove the items included in this collection from the our list categories list box. So to do that, I need to access the items collection of the list categories and call its remove method and provide the item as the parameter. So basically we iterate through the every single list item in this collection, remove them from our list categories items collection. So let's test our application and see if it is going to work or not. And I will choose both of them and I will click delete and which is going to clear all the items in our list box, which means our code worked just perfect. And this is going to be approach that you want to use when you delete multiple items from your list box. Of course, if your site was database enabled, you would do the things a little bit differently. And we will see how to delete multiple items when there's a backhand database in future videos. And that's all I want to talk in this video tutorial. I hope it helped you understand how to bind data to list boxes in several ways, how you bind complex objects to list controls and how to read the selected items from the list controls and also how to delete and select the item from a list control. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.